Raider Nation, how we doing? It is an exciting day. Um, for me, it's now the next day. But the NFL and the Las Vegas Raiders have released their schedule for the upcoming season. They did get four primetime games, which is really good. And I think that has a lot to do with Vegas, but we'll take it. Um, the schedule doesn't look too tough, in my opinion. So, I did what I did here is I chopped it up into four parts. I'm going to be looking at games 1 through 4. 5 through 8, 9 through 12, and 13 through 16. Four different parts, four different videos. Um, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, I just want to say, number one, thank you guys for subscribing. We appreciate everything you guys have done for us. We've got so many subscribers, and it's been so awesome to see that we've got fans. And I think that's why we're trying harder and harder with videos and trying to get everything going. we got the man cave under construction. Just keep on hitting that subscribe button. And we'll keep trying to pump out good coverage for you guys. Speaking of good coverage, let's not forget the Yankee Chatter Podcast. Comes out almost every week. East Coast Nation Podcast. I'm sure that Monster Mash Ken, Easy, and Potts and myself will be talking about the schedule on our next video on our next podcast. Be on the lookout for the uh, Raiders Packers hybrid show and always be on the lookout for the 2000 subscriber episode because once this COVID-19 stuff stops, we will be doing a contest. So Thank you guys again, and let's get in to the Las Vegas Raiders' first ever season, regular season, in the Sin City. <laughs> so, week one, the team travels to Carolina. I think that Carolina is a beatable team, and I think the Raiders do win this game to start off the season. I think they win because the quarterback position on the Carolina side I know they've got Bridgewater. I know they've got McCaffrey. They've got Curtis Samuel. They've got a couple other guys. They've got DJ Moore. I just think the Raiders are a better team because you want to know what? On defense, Carolina is losing their captain and Luke Keekley. Um, It's going to be a little side note. We will be playing against the here Whitehead, which is kind of cool because he was a good Raider for us, and I'm glad he got put on a team, but hey, we got to beat the shit out of him, right? Um, listen, their offense is okay. If we allow 21 points to the Carolina Panthers, that's fine. Because Carolina ranked 31st in the league last year in allowing points. The Raiders need to take advantage of every time they're inside the Carolina 30. They need to get points regardless. And I think they do. I think that this game might be a little bit sloppy with the rookies and stuff. But I do think the Raiders pull a 24-17 type of score, and they start off the season 1-0. and zero. Not a bad start to the season. Week 2 is going to be the fun game. First game in, in uh, the Las Vegas Stadium. Monday Night Football against the Saints. And the Saints were 13-3 and three last year. They brought in Emmanuel Sanders, Latavius Murray, Jared Cook, Draquan Smith on another year in this offense. I just think fate goes to the Raiders. I think the Raiders start off the season 2-0. and I can see them having a late field goal. It just seems like the football gods need to give the Raiders this one. First game in Vegas. It's going to be a spectacle. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I just think it's their time to win this game and show national TV that the Raiders are here to stay. And hopefully, hopefully, they're competitive while they're in Vegas for the next 5-10 years with the personnel they have right now. Obviously, the free agency and the draft stuff moves around, but I think you guys understand what I'm saying. This game here will be huge for the Raiders moving forward. Maybe not for this year. You didn't see the end of the video where I think they're going to be at, but as of right now, if they win this game, it shows the, you know, the American public that the Raiders are here to stay, and they're going to be competitive, and they're going to win games, and Las Vegas is going to be the greatest place to play in. So after all that fun, unfortunately the Raiders have to travel to Gillette Stadium to face the uh, Brady-less New England Patriots. And I do think the Raiders don't win this game. Now, I know the Patriots don't look good on paper. But, guys, the Patriots' defense is really good. And they're bringing back most of their players. I know a couple retired but you're bringing back the reigning defensive player of the year in Gilmore. 
and you know Bill Belichick always puts defense out there that if need be, maybe they they have to score 17 points on offense. And I think with, I don't know who the starter's going to be. I have a feeling it's going to be Hoyer. And even with Brian Hoyer out there, I think in this game between the Raiders and the Patriots, it's going to be whoever gets a 17 first wins the game. I can see the Raiders losing this game 17 to 14. It sucks, but it's still the Patriots. It's still Bill Belichick, and it's still Bill Belichick's defense. The offense doesn't need to do much. They really don't. Brady was not on his game last year. I mean, he was Brady, but he just, like, sometimes he didn't look like Brady, and they still won games. That defense is really, really tough. And I do think the Raiders' bid to go 16-0 stops at Week 3, where they lose to the Patriots probably 17-14. to after that game, the Raiders come back home, week four against the Bills, and unfortunately, I think the Raiders lose this game as well. They start their first quarter two and two. I think the Bills' offense and defense are both trending upward. On offense, they've got three running backs that can all be starters: Singletary, Moss from Utah that got drafted this year, and T.J. Yeldon, who started for the Jaguars for two years before they let. Fournette come in. I'm guessing they want Yeldon back instead of Fournette. And at wide receiver, they've got Stephon Diggs, who's a really good receiver. Cole Beasley, who's a really good slot receiver. And um, John Brown, who's their deep threat. And Jake Allen can for sure throw him that ball. And listen, on the defensive side, they were second in the league allowing points. And the kicker is they were really good on the road compared to being at home. They were 6-2 and two on the road last year. And I just think that this game is one of those games where... Buffalo is just better than the Raiders right now because Buffalo is probably going to win the AFC East, probably at 11 and 5 or 12 and 4. So, unfortunately, we end the first quarter at 2 and 2, but I've got optimism going into the second quarter, games 5 through 8 with a bye week as well as a Sunday night football against Brady. So, we'll see you guys in part 2. Remember, to like, subscribe, comment below on your thoughts of these first four games. Remember all the stuff that we got coming out. Yankee Chatter, East Coast Nation Podcast, Raider Packer Hybrid Show, 2,000 subscriber contest once everything calms down with the COVID-19. And as always, let's go Raiders. Remember to watch part two.